My guest today is Cameron Presley. Cameron, how are you? I'm doing well, Dave. How about yourself, sir? I'm doing great. Welcome to my show. I think this is the first time you've been on this show. Yeah, absolutely. It has been. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so am I. Um, tell me, what do you do? Yeah, uh, right now I am a senior team lead uh, for a company called SolarWinds, where we do a lot of performance monitoring software. So uh, focusing a little bit more on databases. So if you ever worked with SQL Server and wondered, why is it not maybe performing or behaving the way you expect? Probably written some software to help you diagnose those issues. That's important work. Yeah, I, uh, um, and I understand that in your company, you're doing a lot of mentoring of uh, some of the, the junior developers. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the team I'm actually on now is a bunch of interns that we had hired uh, on full time to be associate engineers, right? So very junior. <laughs> very Yes, very, very green. So uh, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about like, how do you level up engineers in technology today when there's so many things moving, right? So first thing that comes to my mind is cloud and containerization, right? You know as well as I do a decade ago that maybe wasn't as prevalent as it is nowadays, right? Oh, so yeah. when I got started in, I got focused more on unit testing, source control, how do you write better code? But now it's all of that plus more stuff, right? Now it's more stuff and every year it's more stuff. So yeah. It can be intimidating on how to learn all that, plus also the actual domain of the problem you're solving, right? So now you've got all the technology, but hey, we're trying to learn more about performance monitoring, right? How do you get into that? Because that's not an easy subject, mm -hmm. right? So definitely spending a lot of time thinking about how do you coach up engineers and developing plans and such. So yeah, you're absolutely right on that. Uh, well, tell me, uh, I mean, all those things you mentioned, they're a challenge for experienced developers. I mean, the technology changes fast and I have to get up to speed on things. But uh, what's what's your approach when you're mentoring people that are just transitioning from internship to full-time employee? These are like new college grads, I imagine. Yeah, um, or uh, career changers at times, right, where they've come from a completely different industry, right? That's it. Um, so yeah, so the first thing I like to focus on is getting them up to speed with the tooling that we use. And I actually step with them through a, a kata, an exercise, right? So that way we're not focusing so much on the problem being solved, we're focusing on how do we get all the tooling involved, right? So uh, the exercise I typically like to use is known as the Mars Rover Kata, where we'll do a brand new repository, right? We'll do git init, and then we'll start adding new projects. We'll start thinking about how do we write code, and then we start teaching things about uh, automated testing, how to commit often good commit messages, how to pair program, right? How do you interact with another professional, right? Because for a lot of uh, these engineers, this may be their first professional job. So right. how do I interact with someone in an appropriate manner, right? And so these pairing sessions really help develop those fundamentals. So by the time we get through the kata, they know how to do a pull request. They know how to do commits. They know how to write some basic automated testing. And they've been able to ask these questions in real time, right? Um, I've tried the blog posts and videos, and that works to get the concepts. But until you really start using it, you don't really get those questions in time. Right. But you're, 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 pre you're pretending that it's a real project. It's not a real project, but you're acting as if it is one. So they get that feel for it. Oh, absolutely, including doing code reviews, right? So they'll when they create the pull request, I'll have other engineers review their work and actually treat it like real work because it is. Right. And so then they learn, how do I give feedback? How do I receive feedback? Maybe I don't agree with one of these engineers. How do I do that in such a way that's not essentially telling them that, well, they don't know what they're talking about? Oh, or right. how do I receive that feedback in such a way that I don't feel like I'm being attacked? <laughs> uh, exactly. Right. Because, goodness, I, I don't know about you, but uh, when every time I start a new job or even when I started, I'd get really nervous. Right. I want to do a good first impression. And um, if you're working with your team lead or your manager, it's even more nerve wracking, right? Because they're like, oh, goodness, I report to this person. I want to impress that person. Yeah, exactly. So anything I do is to help kind of put them at ease and just realize this is the time to make mistakes, right? If you're not messing up, you know, every day a little bit here, you're not really growing, right? And right. so we do these exercises and put them through this project to make sure that they're comfortable. And if they do mess up, it's not the end of the world. You don't really break anything. You mentioned uh, kata, and I think there's a lot of people that don't know what that is. Could you define that? 
Yeah, sure. So uh, kata uh, comes from martial arts, where it's a series of movements to follow into uh, an exercise of sorts. Um, the, from my perspective, the terminology came from uh, Robert Martin as for a coding exercise. So this idea of here's a problem that you can go implement to help you sharpen your skills or maybe reinforce certain things. So uh, to elaborate a little bit more on that, I have found the kata to be really useful for learning new tech stacks or new processes or new toolings because Instead of thinking about, oh crud, I have to remember how to solve this problem, I can focus on how do I use this new tooling or these new processes to solve the problem? So it lets me focus on the thing I actually care about. Okay. All right, well, keep going. Uh, you're, uh, uh, you're working through this kata, you're building a real a foundation. world project. Yeah, yeah foundation. So, so we're laying down the foundation. So by the end of that kata, that exercise, I can put them into the real production code base and instead of them getting lost in, how do I navigate Visual Studio or VS Code? What's a class? What's some of the syntax? What's all of this? They can focus on, well, okay, I know about 80% of all that. Let's look at the real problem. So now I've broken up the engineering fundamentals with the domain fundamentals. Let's talk right. about performance monitoring. Let's talk about what a deadlock is and why that may be important. Let's actually start shepherding those things. And now they've also built up relationships with other engineers through code reviews and pull requests that if I'm not available, they can actually reach out to another engineer and they've already established a relationship. They already Excellent. have someone else they can work with. Are you bringing in uh, the experienced engineers into these cutters to work with them directly? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so sometimes I will pair with the uh, with the new hire or, or intern, but I've actually taken this exercise and pushed it department wide. So other team leads are using this for their new hires. Oh, and so they can. Yeah, so this isn't just uh, I developed it, but I've developed it and iterated in such a way that other teams can pick up and run with this and be a lot more successful. So this is becoming part of the corporate culture. At yes. CP1. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, excellent. What's the next step once they get through this? Yeah, so at that point, they're actually contributing, right? So they're actually working on real items, real work. So what I'll find is the kata will help me point out things that they're not great at. Maybe they're not really good at refactoring, or maybe they're not really good at identifying bad code. Maybe they're not really great at writing tests. So that kata lets them develop some technical skills, but also gives me kind of a sight on what they're good at, what they're not good at. Cool. I can expand upon that in their code reviews. I can give them more structured, more pointed mentoring to help level that up. Um, a great example is one of my engineers was had came to me and said, hey, Cameron, I really appreciate uh, this, but I'm really struggling with continuous integration pipelines. Could you help me out? And I go, oh, sure, absolutely. Let's put the Mars Rover Kata under a CI pipeline, a continuous integration pipelines, go do that. And so they were able to build out this uh, pipeline in Azure DevOps using YAML, and they got to learn this in such a way that um, if they broke something, well, they didn't really break our real build pipeline, right. but they learned enough of the fundamentals that when that engineer got tasked to do some pretty heavy pipeline improvements later on, they felt a lot more comfortable because they knew at least the fundamentals to get started. Yeah, you have to create a, a safe space for them where it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the reason why that's so huge and important to me is uh, when I got started, um, I was an internship. Uh, I was I was in my own internship, and uh, I was working in a place that didn't really use source control. So I was doing something in an environment that I wasn't familiar with. Oh. Accidentally did uh, rm dash f and uh, took out the production uh, web application. Uh, everybody's got a story like that. Yeah, every, everybody's got a story like that, right? And I felt really bad about it, right? Because, oh goodness, I took down production. This was like my third or fourth day on the job, right? So I'm thinking, well, man, this internship's wrapped up, right? I go home <laughs> now, right? And um, the lesson I learned from that is engineers do best, especially newer on their careers, when they have all this freedom that they can go play and learn without actually causing real problems. So anything I can do to sandbox that, let's go. Yeah, I had. Uh, I'm a career changer myself. I was about 30 years old when I got into the uh, the tech world, and uh, as a result, um, people as always assumed that I was more experienced than I was. You know, they assumed I had 10 more years experience than I actually <laughs> had. So I didn't get the kind of mentoring you're talking about. So I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. W when did you develop this process? Goodness, I actually started thinking about this at a at a previous job, actually. So um, in a previous role, the, my uh, charter, if you will, was how do we make our development uh, process more effective? 
So how do I make developers more effective? So I had sat with teams in this large enterprise and I realized, wow, um, for a lot of these teams, they're just missing some fundamentals, right? There's just some certain things that they're missing. So I started thinking about like, okay, well, how do we level up an enterprise company size of engineers, Yeah. right? So all of a sudden certain things won't work, right? I can't pair with every single engineer, you know, eight hours a day, every day for three weeks. That's not scalable. You but what scale. can I that yeah, right? No, I'm I'm good. I'm not that good. <laughs> right. Uh so but what could you do instead? Okay, well, maybe we can develop a set of exercises. All right, I develop it and I actually guinea picked it there. I actually worked with other engineers at this place to figure out what worked, what didn't work. And that's how the Mars Rover Kata came to be. That's why I chose that one. It had just enough complexity that had some fun learning things in it. And it was difficult enough that I could actually see how a developer worked. And from that, I could then teach other engineers how to run the Kata and actually how to level up their engineers. So uh, summer of 2020 um, was the first time, sorry, summer of 2019 is when we, uh, first time we actually unveiled this and actually pushed it out engineering wide. And it was actually pretty darn successful. We had engineers who um, were able to start contributing to the real code base about three weeks in. Hmm. And so if you're looking at a 10 week internship, you're talking about getting real production value three weeks in, that's that's really impressive. Especially uh, when speaking historically, we may not have interns really providing real value until about five weeks, maybe even six weeks in. Very cool. I actually just uh, brought up the Mars Rover Kata right here. It looks pretty interesting. It's, 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 I like the fact that it's it's kind of vague and it's 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 not step by step cookbook type instructions. It's more like here's your goals, go and do that. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, reason why I like that vagueness of it is because I get to put on my product owner hat. So I'll ask the engineer I'm pairing with, hey, uh, I came in with this new requirement. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. So I could kind of see how they think about problems a little bit more too. Right. And it kind of goes back to that coaching of, yeah, I don't know all the requirements at the beginning. Most people don't. Yeah. So how do you work with someone to figure those out and ask those really good questions? So yeah. that's why I really like this exercise so much. There's a, it's also a good lesson that there's multiple right answers to a lot of those questions. Oh, absolutely. Right. Depending on uh, your actual uh, requirements deliverables versus, oh, well, what technology, how do I even approach the problem? Right? Do I take a more object-oriented approach? Do I take a more functional approach? There's a lot of fun little intricacies you can really get into there. So yeah. I like the fact that it's not, you can do this at any company. It's not locked into a tech stack. It's not locked into a language paradigm. You can use this anywhere and it'd be effective. Um, have you shared this outside of Century One? Um, I've talked to fellow coworkers, uh, or sorry, fellow engineers about it. Um, mm -hmm. I've even blogged a little bit about it. Oh, what's your blog? Uh, blog.thesoftwarementor.com. Uh, I can send you a link uh, that puts you in show notes. But yeah, where I've blogged about how you can start breaking down these problems and kind of talking more about the process of going through the kata. Um, but from an actual educational perspective, this is it. You're you're breaking new ground here, David. So me and you are doing this together live. All right. Cool. Um, now, uh, I'm curious if, uh, if you started thinking about this a few years ago, have you refined your approach to mentoring during that time? Oh, yeah, so <laughs> absolutely. Um, so when I first really started thinking about like, how do you level up engineers? Um, I wanted to go straight into technology, right? I want to say, let's go in hands on keyboard, let's go. Because but you're a I, technologist. Yes, right? Uh, yeah, so the way I used to think about problems is let's throw technology at it. And then I realized, well, most of the time it's a process issue, right? Technology helps us with the process problems but it's not the end all be all. So uh, I actually took feedback from my first set of students, like what are things that we didn't cover that you would like to have covered? And one of them was like, uh, at the beginning I didn't do pull requests. I would just do git commit on the main branch and that was it. And I found that once we got through that process, my uh, mentees would have issues creating PRs. They didn't know about that process. So then I baked it in. And then what I realized is on this software development life cycle, I was focusing too much on the software development portion, but not the actual requirements, actually doing code review, actually doing deployments. So that's how it's yeah. refined over time. And it's actually been based on students' feedback. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I had actually wrote a blog post on this many years ago, maybe 10 years ago, about uh, questioning whether or not I am a technologist. Is that my job? At the time I was a consultant. 
<laughs> and and uh, yeah, most of the tools I work with were tech tools. I use Visual Studio and C Sharp. But uh, I, my job wasn't to write code. My job was to solve business problems. And it took me a while to come to that conclusion. It, it's funny that you mentioned that. So if you look at like uh, my Twitter bio or anything, I usually start off with like problem solver. Because I yeah. found that I came to the same realization. like, I'm actually here to solve problems. It just so happens that one of the uh, tools I use is technology. Yeah, that was the conclusion of the post. <laughs> I'll share it with you later on. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to read it. Yeah. Um, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should? Oh, I know. Actually, before we go, that I have a question for you. Um, are you doing some public speaking? Are you speaking about this? Uh, actually, no. Uh, I've so normally a lot of my public speaking is on fundamentals of such, but okay. not from like leveling up uh, associate engineers like this. But uh, given your interest in this, it sounds like that may be the next talk uh, or session topic I should start working on. I think it, uh, it's a really good idea. I think it'd be some interest. Uh, this sounds like a really good experience for the the new developers in your company um, and they once they've made it through this 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 training process these katas um, the training's not done their learning's not done what what happens to them next yeah so at that point we start leveling up on their domain experience right so they'll start taking on actual bugs actual features and then what i'll do is i'll gauge what are they learning right uh, my experience so far at the company tells me that there's certain key aspects of the application and infrastructure and devops such that they need to have experience in so based on what they're working on, what they're naturally inclined to do, and even their own preferences, I'll set them up for success. So a good example of that is one of my engineers uh, was really interested in learning more about pipelines, more complicated pipelines. So uh, I tasked them with overhauling our entire pipeline in Azure DevOps from um, a GUI base to YAML, oh, which wow. was a huge task for him. Mm -hmm. But I connected him with the right people I was right there with him and said, hey, if you need help, let me know, but I'm gonna let you run with this a little bit. And because I've put all these safeguards in place, you couldn't really fail, right? Because the old pipeline was still in place. So that engineer learned, how do I make these huge changes without jeopardizing everything? Mm -hmm. And so now that was the type of projects we started picking up. And now at the end of it, he told me, Cameron, I'm really sick and tired of working with pipelines. I'm like, good, <laughs> you're, you're, you're exactly at the right spot then, perfect. Uh, so now he's an expert. <laughs> he, he is an expert, right? And then he can teach the next set of engineers, right? Oh. And then and then the cycle can continue. Uh, excellent. Well, Cameron, thank you very much. This has been a really interesting conversation, and it's good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. It's been way too long, my friend. All right. Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>